Do you have any scars? A scar is a place on your body that shows where you were once hurt. Sometimes scars can even be places on our body that are easier to hurt again than the other places that don't have scars. Sometimes <coughs> they're places where we're not healed, where we're still hurt. When we look at them, we remember what happened to us. And we also remember, maybe, to be more careful with ourselves in those places. We learn also from our Torah and from our own lives that sometimes the scars we have are not things that we can see with our eyes, but rather they're things that we feel inside our hearts and our minds. And since we can't see those kinds of scars, we sometimes forget that they're even there. And we can forget what happened to cause them. And we can forget to be careful. We can forget that sometimes we're even still hurt. This week's Torah portion has the story of Isaac, a father who is very old. And he has two sons who both want to inherit his blessings and his belongings. But only one of them can. That's how it works in the Torah. Only one son can actually inherit. And so the younger son, Jacob, tricks his big brother, Esau, so that Jacob, not Esau, will get those special blessings and all those belongings from the family. When Esau realizes what Jacob has done, he cries out because it hurts so much. He hurts not on his body, but in his mind and in his heart, this thing that his brother has done to him. He cries out, the Torah says, a, a great and bitter cry. And we know from the way the Torah talks about this cry that Esau is so very sad, so very hurt, so very confused, very angry. This is the worst thing that has ever happened to him. And later in the Bible, that cry, that Sa'akagadola umara, comes back. Those same words are used to de describe someone else's pain much later in the story of our people. It's almost like once that kind of hurt, that kind of anger and sadness and pain happens, it's felt by someone when it's not healed, when it's not fixed, when it's not made right. It never goes away entirely. That's why it repeats later in the Bible. Each time it happens, the scar is hurt again. Something that we understand in our Jewish history is that sometimes not just one person gets hurt when people don't do the right thing. We, some, we know that sometimes the whole community gets hurt. It's been really hard to be Jewish throughout our history, and we remember what that hurt feels like because we all know it, and it makes us pay very close attention to how Jews are treated in the world because we, have, we all have those scars in our collective history, in our collective heart and mind. So we Jews should understand, maybe even better than anyone else, the cries that we hear around us right now at the University of Missouri at Yale, and even in our own streets here in Memphis. We are not the only ones, not the only people with a hard history of the heart and mind injuries that we have that have not been made right, who have to keep a close watch on how we're treated because of how we're still hurt. In our newspaper last week, columnist David Waters wrote a very important article about the shameful notation of the business enterprises of Nathan Bedford Forrest on a sign downtown. The sign talks about the wealth of this man, Forrest, but it doesn't mention where his wealth came from. Of course, it came from the slave trade that took place right here in Memphis. This is a scar that has never healed, and it is a, a sign like that, of which there are many in our city, is a hurt over and over again at a tender spot for so many of our fellow citizens. A member of our congregation, Professor Daniel Keel, wrote about this 
in the Memphis Flyer only a few months ago in his reflections on race relations in our city and how they compare to South Africa, where he's currently living. And this is what he wrote. To make the process of reconciliation more constructive, there must be more thorough and honest look into the past and its effects on the present. That includes acknowledging the pain caused by symbols of oppression and the disadvantages and attitudes that linger from that era. Dismissals of the relevance and legitimacy of that pain with statements like, let's move on, or you can't change history, only make productive dialogue more difficult. What he's saying is that we can't forget about the scars of other people. We as Jews know our history the best, and we can crawl inside it and see and feel our scars, and we can know from our Torah that if they're not made right, they continue to hurt throughout history. We must crawl inside the history of our African-American brothers and sisters, too. We have got to walk in the shoes of our fellows, of someone whose people have suffered in this country the way we Jews have suffered elsewhere. We can look at our own bodies and look inside our own hearts and see where we've been hurt, and we should do that. But we have to admit that we don't always know other people's scars quite as well. But it's our job to try and learn. Only when we feel their pain only when that, when that Akagado La Umara, that great and bitter cry cried in this week's Torah portion, is something that we can hear and we can feel. Only then can we bring healing to those scars of the mind and heart that so many carry with them every day. So on a night when so many are hurting, I hope and pray that we find it within ourselves to crawl inside that hurt, to feel it with every fiber of our being, and to try and be a part of the healing, that none of us is exempt, and we all are powerful to help and bring about a comfort and a healing. Shabbat Shalom.